It's time for the one and only, the premier, the only official podcast of Pro Rodeo. Your suit bosses are ready, so let's give it a go and talk some rodeo. Hello, everyone, and welcome into another episode of The Shoot Boss is the official podcast of Pro Rodeo. And what a great show we have coming your way here today. Tracy, we're going to sit down and talk with six-time NFR qualifier Will Loomis. We've got everything. We've got your eight-question segment, short round, you name it. We have it here on the show. And I just can't say wait to, to sit down with Will because that's a guy that wears a lot of caps right now, and he's also competing for a gold buckle on top of it. Yeah, he's been so close to the gold buckle several times, six-time NFR guy, like you said, and he coaches in college. He, we, I did a story about him a couple years ago, Doc Loomis. He majored in kinesiology. He's got all these things, irons in the fire. I know he's like a handyman fence, built his own house a couple years ago. Who knows? I mean, it's great to talk to him, and the thing I like about Will outside of his talent, he's just so charismatic. Yeah, and he might even be able to fill in his Thor on occasion, yeah, you know, yeah, big guy. A- <laughs> he could be a bouncer on that new roadhouse. I don't know if you've seen the new roadhouse. I have not. It's pretty soft. I was pretty pretty underwhelmed. The old roadhouse is so bad it's good. This one's so bad it's probably not good. <laughs> I'll see if I can roadhouse you <laughs> later on today. All right, let's get into our pro rodeo props, as we always do, Tracy. And this one's going to be a good one because, you know, we have an opportunity to to recognize and announce, you know, to our viewers if they haven't seen it, all of the 2024 Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame inductees. And I have a big list here. I'm just going to read the list to make sure we don't miss anybody. Uh, your 2024 class, headlined, obviously, by bareback rider Casey Field, the late bull rider Blue Stone, team roper Art Arnold, stock contractor Sammy Andrews, notable J.D. Yates, contract personnel Daryl Diefenbach, barrel racer Marlene Edelman McCray, barrel racer uh, Gina Day, and then also Burns Rodeo standout bull Mr. T in the Tri State Rodeo in Fort Madison, Iowa. And, uh, you know, obviously the Kim Stimler Award as well on that side of things, Tracy. Just a, an overall great class here in Pro Rodeo. Yeah, and Bob Feist has yeah. been awarded that honor. Obviously, Bob Feist is known, renowned in rodeo circles, especially in team roping. The BFI, yeah. Yeah, and, and honestly, I, I didn't know if Casey would get in, not because he's not deserving. It's just sometimes they make guys wait. And even. He was he, a little surprised. He yeah. thought he was going to have to wait five or six years because, like the NFL, you have to wait five years. There's a five more wait. Uh, Major League Baseball, you have to wait. But it's not that way in Pro Rodeo. I mean, Roy Cooper went in and, right? couple years after his rookie year in 1979 so it's not unprecedented that he went in when he just retired and he deserves to be in he's six-time world champion he headlines the class and what a class I mean and the one that surprised me the most I mean they're all well deserving I honestly thought Sammy Andrews was in Mm -hmm. Uh, namely I mean Bodacious speaks for himself the probably the rankest bull of all time depending on who you talk to and I thought he was in and I mean well deserved he started his own stock stock contracting company in 1980 so I mean Mm -hmm. it's been a long way and Art Arnold was at the inaugural NFR 1959 and that's a call I'm sure he never thought he'd get at this point in his life so it's great it's an emotional time we get to see it you know experience the raw emotion of it and I mean you're you're known the rest of your life you're immortalized in a hall of fame in the ultimate rodeo hall of fame the pro rodeo hall of fame yeah you mentioned that just a little bit and you know we had a chance to to be in there and i think you may have spoke on this tracy in the pro rodeo sports news but you know we had a chance to be in their room you know when they make the calls we've now what been three years yeah. three induction classes that we've been in there for and this the emotion is awesome i think it was was it art arnold that we called tracy yeah. and uh you know he was sitting there and we said you know art this is coming from the pro or from the uh the PRC, hall of fame yeah. the prca here we just want to let you know you're going into the hall of fame class and and uh, you just hear somebody say, oh, my God, in the background. Yeah. And he's like, you know, my wife just heard the call, and she was just ecstatic, Tracy. And those are the type of moments that, you know, these guys really do get celebrated, and it's a uh, an accomplishment they'll never forget and a moment they'll never forget. Right, because usually when they see the PRCA call and like it or not, they think they're getting fined. If you're they, still a contestant. Or, or yeah. they've done something wrong, and then all of a sudden it goes from, wow, like what are they calling me for, to a life-changing moment that you're in the Hall of Fame, even like, J.D. Yates, I mean, he spoke of his dad. He roped with his dad. He's 15 years, four months. Imagine being a 15-year-old at four months and rope with your dad at the NFR and then win rounds that year. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then you and your dad and your sister Kelly go in the first NFR, you know, father, son, and sister, and I believe 83. I mean, there's so much history there. And you look at all these qualifications and all these people, and it's just it's amazing. And obviously there's people that get left out like any Hall of Fame. But the key to that, and I'm not – 
you know, speaking out of turn here, just nominate people. The only way people can get in in our priority Hall of Fame is by getting nominated, and you have to get it way out early. They have a big book that we see. Yeah, they do. And there's a lots of nominees. It's not like they're looking through five or six guys We're every year. Hundreds. They're going through hundreds of people that haven't got in over the years. So if you can nominate them, maybe you get your person in. But it's just such a great time, and you've experienced the Hall of Fame here, and it, there's nothing like it. I mean, it's it just... It's the, literally the icing on the cake for legendary careers. Yeah, and Daryl uh, Diefenbach, as I said, or Diefenbach, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, that's a kid from Australia. You mm -hmm. know, grew up a bullfighter, wanted to come to the United States, didn't come to the U.S. until he was 24 years old. He made his first NFR at 27, you know, went on to have a, a pro rodeo Hall of Fame career. So it's just stories like that that uh, we'd love to share, and we'll have more of that coming up in your pro rodeo Hall of Fame spotlight. But let's move on, Tracy, going to our short round. And this one was going to be something that was announced early last week. But uh, Durango Boots and the PRCA, they've come together for a sweet collection. It's the PRCA Boot Collection, Tracy, and these are awesome boots. You know, they're trying to bring them up to performance standards for these cowboys to be able to wear out in the arena, but also they just look good on your feet. You can wear them around the office. Heck, if you want to go out and do chores in them, you can do that as well. But uh, pretty awesome uh, collaboration between the PRCA and uh, Durango. Yeah, first ever. And, I mean, Durango jumped on a few years ago with this as a sponsor. And they've got endorsees like Riley Webb, you know, tie-down roping world champion, reigning tie-down roping world champion. The thing I like about it, and I'm not an aficionado on boots, is just how stylish they look. Yeah. I mean, I know boots are boots, but, man, they, they really stood out. What are you looking at down I, there? Well, About we, a pair we, of boots we might there? have someone in here in our studio wearing some of those boots. So it's just it, there are a lot of style to them, and people like them. And, I mean, they've made a name for themselves in a short period of time in the PRCA. Yeah, no doubt about it. So we can't be more excited. You can shop those boots. You can go to ProRodeo.com or visit the Durango website. Get yourself ordered some because they are pretty sweet boots. Another thing on our short round, Tracy, we just wrapped up uh, the Heise Desert Stampede in Redmond, Oregon this past week. And how about tie-down roper Bo Cooper getting the job done? But it also came for Bo's win. Came from a little intel from a fellow roper just caused to show, you know, how rodeo is collaboration. Ty Harris gives him, he's able to watch his run. He gives him a quick call. Bo Cooper comes out and ends up winning the rodeo, uh, nudging out uh, Haven Medjin. Yeah, and 7 8 is what he had, and that just tells you the friendly competition these guys have. I mean, most sports, you're not calling a guy and he's no. not telling you how to beat the calf. He couldn't. I mean, but that's not how rodeo works. These guys are all cheering for the, each other, and Bo Cooper had a great year last year. He made the NFR. And he's got to get things rolling. And the, the crazy thing about Cooper is he's borrowing horses, he's doing things, which would be tough. I mean, we know how tough it is with horsepower. But he's still showing how good he is. He's able to use other guys' horses and win. And maybe this will get him on the track to get back to the NFR. Yeah, another guy that's trying to get back to the NFR leads us right into our eight-question segment, Garrett Shabble, out with an injury a year ago. We're going to sit down and talk with him, Tracy. And Garrett's on the right path right now, you know, probably off to the best start he's had in his career so far here in 2024. Yeah, and he probably would have made it last year. He got injured right before the 4th of July run, and he was pretty much that into this. River year. accident. Yeah, broke river. His foot, yeah. Broke his foot. It just bad luck. And now he's he wins Denver. He's won a lot of rodeos. He's won a lot of money in the Mountain State circuit. And he's right there. I mean, as long as he keeps staying consistent, he'll be back. And, yeah. I mean, he's a solid performer. Does he have gold political potential? Sure, because the rounds pay so much. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, and you get on a heater. We always say you get on a heater in Vegas and you draw well and the horse is you get the horse by your name that you want and you win around, all of a sudden you win in the average and you can win a world title. So the thing I like about Garrett, and I know I said this, he's he's the historian of the sport. He understands it. He understands how the media works. Smart guy. I mean, he majored in chemistry. I mean, most of our Cowboys don't major in chemistry, and that's not a knock against chemistry. I'm anti-chemistry. I try to avoid it at all costs. Oh, I can tell. Yeah. But I, I applaud guys like that because they're well-rounded and they understand how this works. And I, I'm, I hopefully he gets to the NFR again and gets reaches his dreams. Yeah, no doubt about it. He's top five in the world standings right now. We'll go to our eight-question segment with Garrett Chadwell. Favorite movie? Uh, Forrest Gump. Favorite restaurant? Uh, yeah, blah, blah. Uh, Applebee's. Favorite show you watch with your children? My children have some poor taste in shows. <laughs> um, Little Bear. What is the Doan University mascot? Tiger. 
What's your favorite wrestling hold you used to use? Oh, probably single leg takedown. Describe bareback riding in one word. Uh, fierce. Favorite horse you've ever ridden? Hmm. hmm. That you're gonna have to give me a second to think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um. I'm gonna go with game trail. If not rodeo, what would you be doing? Oh, ranching. Horses are one of nature's greatest gifts, which is why they deserve the very best that nature has to offer. Since we've started using hemp flavor, our horses are calmer, more willing, more athletic. And the daily pellet, they eat it in their feed. My horses are picky. For them to eat it says something. The stuff's really just been lightning in the bottle. Equine Hemp Solutions, we support your horse so you can support your lifestyle. Proud supporter of your Western Sports Association. Go to the Equine Solutions website below and use Cowboy 10 and receive 10% off your order. We're back here, segment number two of the Shoot Bosses, but make sure you stay with us in segment number three. We're going to sit down and chat with Will Loomis, six-time qualifier to the NFR, and Big Will will have some good things to share with us, so make sure you stick around for that. But Tracy, we get things started off here in segment number two with our Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame spotlight, and as we always do, we're shining bright on 1979 Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame inductee Clark McIntyre in the, in the steer roping category. This is one of those guys, you know, that, that got steer roping started back in the day and, you know, had a ton of success with it. Three-time world champion. Last title came in 1961, and rightfully so, he was inducted into the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. Yeah, and if the name sounds familiar, that's Reba McIntyre's dad. Yeah. And she wore his buckle when she sang the national anthem. I believe it was national anthem at the Super Bowl this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah, the family's legendary. They, I mean, they've all been involved in... He was one of the best. I mean, you have to be one of the best to go in the inaugural class of the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. I mean, they had so much to choose from because they didn't start the Hall of Fame until 79, and he goes in, so it's just amazing. Yeah, and uh, Clark was one of those guys that, you know, obviously he was very talented steer roper himself, but he credited back in his time, Trace, he credited a lot of his success to his horse, Joe. Mm -hmm. And uh, another former world champion, Don McLaughlin, says, you know, that that was maybe one of the best steer roping horses he had ever seen. You know, we yeah. get horses like that that come along, and Don talked about it a little bit that you know if you can have a good horse it can do a lot of the work for you yeah especially in steer roping yeah, i mean exactly. steer roping is such well, you have to have a good yeah, it's horse. such a difficult event and if you're if you don't have the horsepower a but you don't have the horse that knows how to do the right things it's impossible to be a world champ so i i, I can understand what he's saying about joe yeah there's your pro rodeo hall of fame spotlight we shine it bright on clark mcintyre let's move on with our did you know segment tracing we'll continue with the the theme of having hall of famers in the mix how about crystal do this guy wasn't just a country music star a lot of people know his music and you know know the great tunes that he put out heck i still listen to chris ledoux you know pretty much every day every week you know pop on a song of chris and listen to it but he was also a five-time qualifier for the national finals rodeo and in that uh, point 1976 went on won a prca world championship and uh, probably i would say maybe top five tracy top 10 of the most recognizable cowboys of all time chris ledoux Oh, certainly. Anytime we post anything on social media or on our website, it gets thousands and thousands of hits. And in 76 when he won, the weird thing about that is they had that stretch from 76 to 78. They just wiped away your season. Yeah. Whoever got there. So it, it was so whoever, the NFR. whoever did the best at the NFR was the world champ. And give Chris credit. I mean, at that point you step up, it's all or nothing, and he wins. And I've been to his... Uh, restaurant and uh, outside of Sher Sheridan, Wyoming. I mean, he's a legend in Wyoming, but he's a legend. I mean, he's, he's got his family still involved with rodeo in some aspect as well. So I, it's unfortunate. Guys like that are guys that I wish I got to meet. Yeah, Unfortunately, here, I didn't. Yeah. But, I mean, he's left a mark, you know, for the rest of for his family and the rest of his life. Yeah, and you mentioned that 1976 world title. Ledoux won that title by edging out another world champ, or excuse me, edging out Jack Ward Jr. for the world title. That was back when it was in Oklahoma City. So cool accomplishment there. There's your Did You Know segment. It's time for our viewer questions, and we just want to remind you before we get to this that you can submit viewer questions right to us here on the Shoot Bosses podcast. You can go to our YouTube page in the comment section and uh, put in a comment in there and just ask us, you know, what you want, and we'll make sure we go back through the comments and look at it 
time. Or you can go to any of our social media pages and message us or leave a comment there and just put hashtag the shoot bosses and ask your question. The lucky viewer to get on the show this week, it's going to go to Jeff. He comes to us via Instagram. This is an interesting one, Tracy. He wants to know how many rough stock animals are taken to compete at the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo this year. And it's probably more than most people imagine. Last year, 311 rough stock animals. And you know, that doesn't include maybe the occasional uh, substitute just in case mm -hmm. something happens, you know, you bring some more along. But on the official list, 311 in 2023. Yeah, and they all get rewarded for going. Yeah, I, you get a nice payday as a stock nice, contractor. Nice payday as a stock contractor. Some obviously contractors have more than others, but it's the best of the best. That's why it's the NFR. And I mean, imagine taking 20, 30 animals there as a stock contractor, and some do. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy, but 300 seems massive, but when you go there and there's 10 rounds, I mean, it's not like a Super Bowl that happens on one night. I mean, it's 10 rodeos. Yeah, I mean, 10 rounds, so you got, yeah, you know, 10 rodeos for the most part, you want to have... 15 guys. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's why it divides out. It's, it's just an amazing... That's why I suggest to anybody, if you have a chance to go to the NFR, just go, because not only do you get to see great athletes, you get to great, see the best animal athletes in the world. Yeah, you know, and, and in the turn of that, Tracy, is you get over 100 bareback horses, you know, 100 saddle bronc horses, mm -hmm. 100 bulls, and, you know, obviously that number is, they're like, well, 15 times 10, you know, the 10 rounds, mm -hmm. that doesn't work out, but a lot of the animals go in multiple rounds, right. you know, you'll have somebody that goes in, in two and then goes again in six or five it's and ten. It's usually five and ten for yeah. the big ones, the, mm -hmm. the like the eliminators or the, the the big round ten pin. That's usually how it worked through the years. But yeah, I mean, still, I mean, it's like the super. It's like taking all of the uh, Hall of Famers or taking all of the best, you know, NFL players and going to the Pro Bowl with right. football players. It's just like that for stock. You know, right, it's the right. best stock, and the Cowboys choose it as the big thing. Yeah, I mean, and they choose it because they want animals, horses, and bulls they can score well on. Score well on, get and, big and get, scores, and get yeah. checks, and that's part of a world championship. And then nothing against certain animals, but there's certain animals you probably know if I ride my best, it's an 80, mm -hmm. bull or horse. But if I ride my best on this bull or horse, I could get a 90 and I could win the round. Not, and they know better than anybody. They go to all these rodeos Absolutely. across the country and every cowboy knows the intel on the great ones. I mean, they do. So, And then their stock contractors know that too. So they try to bring out the best of the NFR and they usually are the best at the NFR. That's why they're there. Yeah, that's a really great question. We appreciate it, Jeff. A lot of us to have a, a little banter back and forth about that just a little bit. And Tracy, it's time for uh, well, one do, of the I segments. I will say one thing. Uh -oh. Shoot Boss Nation, I know one of the questions out there that I saw, I can bench press 225 five times. I know that's been asked several times. I've been working out, and that's that's kind of what I've been working out. It doesn't look that way, but when I get in the weight room, I'm an animal. Thanks, Shoot Boss Nation. Shoot, shoot Boss Nation. I don't think anyone asked that. I think he's just out of control. Another guy that's out of control that looks a hell of a lot like him. It's time for Buck's Pro Rodeo Word of the Day, Tracy. And, uh, you know, Buck is just, uh, he's fighting through it. He's trying to come out on the other side. And I saw he had a nice shirt on just a couple of episodes ago, or maybe that was last week. But uh, he seems to be, you know, figuring some things out. Hopefully he doesn't get in the mutton busting anytime soon. Yeah, I, I think Buck stole that shirt from a high school kid, which wouldn't surprise me. That's about his speed because he's not going to be able to afford something that nice. He steals that from a kid. That's where he, that's the that's the life he lives. That's the life he's chose. This could be a lonely buck. I'm, I'm hearing rumors that this this word could involve loneliness for buck, which is the life he lives as well. Loneliness is a drink a lot of people share. It's something Buck shares every day. <laughs> Buck's got your pro rodeo word of the day. I'm Buck, correspondent for the Shoot Bosses, the official podcast of the PRCA. My word for the day is pen, as in a lot of livestock animals hang out around the pen at rodeos. When it comes to buck, the only pen I know is the bowling pen. I finished 8 out of 8 in my city championship league. Maybe I shouldn't have been wearing these Eclipse glasses. Where am I? Cowboying is in our blood. Cowboying is in our bruises. It's in our rain-soaked jackets. In our calloused hands, tested by barbed wire and rope. Our mud-stained boots to the crown of our resist-all hat. You live out west for even the shortest time, and there's one thing you learn. You can't pretend out here. Resist-all. We live it every day.
Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome back into the Shoot Bosses, the official podcast of Pro Rodeo Tanner Bar, Tracy Rink. Tracy, we talked about it off the top of the show. We're getting ready to sit down with six time NFR qualifier Will Loomis. You know, Will's a guy that uh, not only has success inside the rodeo arena, a lot of success outside of it as well as a coach. He does a little bit of work on guys, you know, at rodeo sometimes, and uh, just can't wait to catch up to Will, one of the good personalities in the sport of rodeo. Yeah, and he's been close to a world championship. I know he wants that gold buckle, and honestly, he probably should have been in the new Roadhouse. He'd be a good fit in one of the bar and Roadhouse, throw some guys around. He, he looks like a bouncer if you just see him walking around. <laughs> we'll see what he has to say about that one. Will is joining us right now here on the podcast. And, uh, Will, thanks for doing this. We know you're busy. you got a lot going on, and uh, we just appreciate your time jumping on here with us, man. Yeah, you bet. I appreciate you guys having me on. Well, first thing we want to know is we can see your shirt right there. Uh, for fans out there and listeners here of the Shoot Bosses podcast, uh, they may not know, but Will's also uh, the head rodeo coach at Northwest Mississippi Community College, Tracy. And, yeah. Will, take us through a little bit, uh, you know, why you decided to go down that path and coach kids and, you know, how it's been going so far for you. You know, this is something that I really wish would have come just a few years later in my life, you know, just uh, with, with me still rodeoing and stuff, but it's, it's so rewarding um, to be able to give back to the sport. And it's something that I never really knew that I would really enjoy doing um, until I, you know, was, it was just uh, the job became available and my wife and I talked about it and I said, yeah, I can try and just see, you know, and, and it's been really, really rewarding for me, um, you know, and, and honestly, not just helping the kids, but helping myself because what I'm trying to teach them is, it's kind of the same stuff that I need to reteach myself when I was in college and when I was first starting to rodeo as far as the mental side of the game and, and, and all of that. So, um, it, you know, like I said, it's just, it's been awesome for me to kind of go back and, and also, uh, go back to the same rodeos that I competed in, uh, when I was college rodeoing in this region. Nice. Well, so how much do they lean on you and do you talk about your experiences being a coach and you obviously talking to the guys on your team? You know, they, they ask me a lot of things, and a lot of it, uh, you know, some of them are starting to enter some pro rodeos and, and have their permits and stuff, and a lot of it's about entering and and uh, and just how, how, you know, how to overcome things. And, um, you know, there's uh, – when you're 18 years old, they, uh, pro problems seem way bigger than they actually are. Um, so that's something that I've had to – had to uh, realize that I was in that same stage as well and, and try to help them through it, so – um, you know, and help them realize that a lot, a lot of problems that they're coming across aren't really that big of a problem. So, um, you know, which makes it easier to get by. So, um, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's been awesome. It's been rewarding and, and, and I'm, I've, I've loved it uh, so far, but, uh, a year and a half, I guess I've been working on it. So have you had to go head to head with any of your college kids yet? Uh, yeah, well, you know, we'll have a we'll have a couple of matches and, uh, I actually had one text me, uh, he is doing pretty well in the circuit, and, uh, you know, he's got uh, some, uh, about a month ago, I guess he had more money than one than I did in the circuit, and he sent me a picture of a screenshot of it. And, and uh, yeah, anyway, so that's been fun. You know, it's fun to kind of compete with them and, and uh, you know, practice with them. And, uh, yeah, it's been awesome. I've been flanking and tying some calves again, too. So, uh, you know, go back to my college days and, and uh, making the college finals in the calf roping. So it's it's been fun to kind of break back out and, and see if I still had it. So we're going to see Will Loomis in the tie down roping. We got some breaking news here, maybe. Uh, no, Clayton Hass entered me in Okeechobee, Florida, and I did rope down there, and it didn't go as I did rope and tie my calf, but I was like fourteen, so uh, I don't know. I've got to work on my get off. I'm not a, not quite as uh, uh, not athletics, not the word. I don't know, nimble maybe, <laughs> as I used to be. I, I know a couple years ago I did a story about you being Doc Loomis and majoring in kinesiology and doing some things. So now if you're Doc Loomis and you could speak on that, and then you're a little bit of part Dr. Phil now that you're a college coach, you have to <laughs> have to deal oh, with the drama. Yeah. Not not doctor. I'll leave that to my wife. Uh, but uh, it's just uh, you know again it's 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 been it's been fun just to uh, I, honestly I. I don't know if the kids are getting more out of it or if I'm getting more out of it. Uh, you know, just putting, putting something, putting my time and effort into something that I'm really passionate about, um, you know, with, with the kids and, and, uh, yeah, just, just trying to, I've, I've been calling it molding young minds. That's great. And you mentioned that just a little bit, you know, they're helping you just as much as you are helping them. 
In that turn, Will, let's talk a little bit about your pro rodeo career up to this point. You've been so close to a world championship. Take me through that year you came up, you know, just short. You know, how much did that uh, breathe fire into you to come out and try and get that gold buckle? Which year? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I guess uh, just talk about being uh, that close. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, it stinks. You know, there's, there's uh, left in my career. That's the only thing that I would love to win that I haven't won. And, uh, you know, honestly, it, it's something that I've come to peace with. If it's something I have to walk away from rodeo without, uh, I still had a great career, um, you know, and, and I'm still after, don't get me wrong, but I, uh, you know, it's just one of those, it's just one steer. And it's always you seems to come down to one steer or one mistake or one barrier, uh, you know, and when you have people like Tyler Waggis back on your back, uh, a great friend of mine, but nonetheless, uh, somebody that doesn't make many mistakes ever. Um, and you very rarely ever seen beat itself. So, um, that's the main deal. You know, you just back in there and do your job every time and, and, uh, just don't beat yourself, you know? So that's, uh, that's my goal this year. Um, <laughs> uh, not having a great NFR last year. Um, I've been, I've been pretty hungry to get back and, uh, you know, I've had a great winter so far, so we'll see how it goes. Last year at the NFR, was it just horsepower or things weren't working or good draws? I mean, you you were so consistent, you know, the times you just missed the gold buckle. I mean, everybody has off NFRs at time for different reasons. W what was behind that? No, you know, I was still riding a great horse in bins. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I drew some decent steers. Uh, you know, I had some, you know, some, some of my issues this year with a couple of bears were some in inconsistent gates, I thought. Um, you know, so um the start so fast there that you know everything's got to be really really quick and really sharp and and i felt like maybe that was you know that 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 was kind of an issue there for you know for a couple of guys actually not even in, in just our event um and um you know it just it just honestly sometimes it just doesn't go your way and sometimes you have bad luck and um you know somebody uh, curtis Casty told me he said you know my dad told me one time you make the nfr as many times as we had, you're bound to have a bad year. You can't just have a good NFR every year. It just, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it just, sometimes you're going to have bad years and I've, you know, I've been blessed and not really had any bad ones. So I was due one. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm just chalking it up for that and, and we'll go back and, and stick it on them next year or this year. Yeah. Well, what's the outlook on this season? You know, you mentioned it just a little bit. How do you split your time between being a college coach and going out and rodeoing and, uh, you know, where do you see things shaking out here in 2024? You know, I'm looking to uh, I'm looking to rodeo again and ride bins and rodeo with Clayton Hass and Walt Arnold and um, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a good year it's gonna be fun. Um, you know, Clayton and I are kind of getting close to you know we're kind of getting up in age so we're kind of getting close to in our career so it's just one of those things where we want to enjoy every moment of it and every minute of it and and uh, you know because we're not gonna be able to do this forever and uh, I think. I think a lot of times we take uh, what we do for granted, and that's one thing that I don't want to do this year. I want to enjoy every minute of it, and and uh, if we've got the go buckle at the end, or even make the NFR at the end, you know, we're gonna, um, you know, we're gonna take it for what it is, and 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 that's a blessing. And my wife and I actually had a conversation not too long ago about you know the first year we made the finals, the second year we made the finals. It was always just a blessing to be there. And now when we get there, um, you know, we're expected to do so good, or or we expect ourselves to do so good. And now we're hunting a gold buckle versus just showing up and doing our job and just being blessed to be there. Um, Cause there's, you know, grand scheme of things, there's 400 guys going down the road and there's only 15 to get to go. Um, so, you know, it's, it's truly just an accomplishment and a, and, and a blessing to be there in the first place. Can you explain to the people who watch this, what it's like to be part of that grand entry and just be in the Thomas and Mack center and just the, the vibe of that place on, before round one yeah you know the last couple of years i've been by myself um uh in the, in the grand entry for mississippi uh i say the last couple of years um you know jake orman uh a boy i actually a guy i went to high school with um it made them last year or two years ago and then uh marcus terrio and cole curry both made it this past year in the team roping um so but the years previous to that I was kind of by myself. So it's been fun to be able to ride around the arena and, and carry the flag and represent Mississippi and, and have some friends to do it. And it was actually fun because uh, in the 10th round, I gave the flag to Cole Curry and let him carry and wave it around. So that was awesome. Um, but, you know, it's just, it, it, it's, it, you know, just competing in the, in the Thomas and Mac is amazing, but, but 
when you actually make the circle around that arena in the grand entry, you know, you've done it, you know, you've made it. So, um, kind of until that moment, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of surreal, um, especially when you do it the first time, um, you know, and we'll practice and everything a couple of days before. So everybody knows what they're doing, but until them guys are hollering and the music's blaring and you run it, you, you make your first lap around there. It's, 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 uh, it's pretty unreal. So we've got the Alabama Slama, you know, in that side of things in steer wrestling. What do we got for Mississippi? You got any good nicknames? I know we used to call you Big Will there for a while. Man, Biscuit's the one going around right now. Like it. <laughs> um, you know, uh, and Casey Jones actually gave me that one and said, "There's nothing countryer than a biscuit." So, uh, you know, that's uh, that, that. I guess that's the one that's rolling around right now. I like it. I like it. So who's the, you've been doing this for a while and been great at it. Who's one of the coolest guys you've got to meet because of your rodeo career? Um, I met Ben Roethlisberger at the American this past year. So that was pretty cool. Um, you know, there's, there's, there, there's been a handful of guys that I've gotten to meet and I was able to meet Joe Diffie. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, he's one of my, he's, you know, he's one of my favorite country music singers. So that was really cool. Um, you know, just it's, it's, it's opened us up to, uh, you know, we're not near as famous as, as, as some of those people, obviously. But, uh, you know, when you turn around and, uh, well, i tell you what, uh, uh, Mo, Mo uh, Brings Plenty from Yellowstone was actually at the Westgate uh, where we were staying as well this year at the NFR. And uh, when he was walking down the stairs, we had, we had kind of crossed eyes one time just walking through the casino and then a day or two later, he was walking past me, and I said, or when he walked by me, he said, hey, can I get my picture with you? And I looked at him funny, and I'm like, yeah, you can, but I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> so, you know, it's it, it's funny that, uh, you know, obviously those guys are way more famous than we are, but, you know, I think that that we forget what stage we're on, too, and that people watch us and and, and know who we are by our faces as well. So, you know, that's, that's been pretty cool just to, just to kind of open us up to, to, you know, situations like that. Yeah, we got a couple more things for you, Will, and then we'll let you go. I just wanted to ask, you know, you've been to so many rodeos across the country. What's your favorite rodeo, and what sticks out to you about that rodeo? Oh, man, I've got a few, um, and some of them might surprise you. So Calgary Stampede's always a cool rodeo. It's just, uh, you know, it's one of the biggest ones we get to go to, the biggest one during the summer. Um, Salinas is cool. Just, the you know, the way it's kind of set up and you run steers way out there and it's kind of more of a cowboy event than it is a steer wrestling. Um, and you got to have a lot of control to be able to slide them going that fast. So I like that one. Um, you know, Houston's always cool. They treat you so well there. There's, there's such a nice place to stay. Um, and, uh, you know, one of my, one of my true, truly favorite rodeos is Estes Park, Colorado. And, um, you know, not a huge rodeo, but but a decent, you know, decent size, mid size rodeo. But I always like driving up that mountain to that rodeo because you know that's one of the things I was mentioning earlier about just enjoying every minute of it and and understanding that people don't get to see what we get to see. And when you drive up that mountain and you get on top of the mountain at Estes Park and there's elk walking around the middle of town, um, you know, it's just it, it's it's unreal. Just uh, you know the things that we get to see traveling around, and then uh, you know when you're in the arena. If you look in any direction, there's huge mountains on either side of you. And, uh, you know, I think so many times we get caught up in the moment. We're just in the arena doing our thing and we forget to look around at, at you know, what God created and what, you know, what we're actually blessed to be able to do. Did you always envision yourself as a steer wrestler? Was football, was anything in there or was it always going to be rodeo? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I played high school football, uh, but honestly, I was going to be a calf roper for a long time. Um, that was kind of my main event. And then I started, uh, kind of steer wrestling my sophomore, junior year of high school. And my uncle made the NFR four times. So that was, you know, that was kind of a no brainer for me. Cause I had a great coach. Um, and then when I started steer wrestling, it came really, you know, came pretty natural to me. It felt good. I was strong. Um, and, and I, again, I had a great coach. So, uh, you know, I roped calves and roped steers all the way through college. Uh, made the college finals roping calves, won fourth in the nation rope. Actually, always did better um, in the calf roping. I won a Little Bridges World title in the calf roping. I won fourth in the nation one year in college in the in the in the calf roping, and it just seemed like I always struggled. I you know I would win, but in the steer wrestling, um, but but it seemed like when the 
when the short rounds and stuff came along or where I was sitting at, at the, at the end of the year, calf roping seemed to be, seemed to be better a lot of times. Um, but you know, I love steer wrestling and I put a lot of work into it and it's, it's turned out to be awesome. One last question. Who's the best beer drinker in the steer wrestling group? Uh, that's a good question. Um, two guys, Tyler Pearson or Kyle, uh, uh, Ty Erickson. Okay. I gotcha. <laughs> I like it. Well, well, well we appreciate in, in my group or for all steer wrestlers? I was going to say all steer wrestlers. I think you got it. Yeah, what about your group? Definitely be, yeah, definitely be those two. What about your group? Uh, well, Ty's not rodeo with us this year, but it would have been Ty. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, I'm, I, uh, uh, you know, we like, we like to have a beer. I'm more of a bourbon guy myself. So, uh, you know, I'm going to put that on, but then Clayton gets on to like twisted teas and stuff. It's kind of <laughs> weird uh yeah yeah i don't know i don't know it, it probably between me between me clayton and walt it'd probably be a good battle i like it i like it well will we appreciate it so much man we know you're busy it was great to chat with you and uh we just wish you the best of luck out there on the road this year and hopefully we'll see you see you here shortly yeah you bet i appreciate it there Thank it you. is yep there it is take care uh tracy will loomis just a great guy you know you can see him he's been so close to that gold buckle but he also puts it into perspective on you know how important it is what they get a chance to go out and do yeah and he's so charismatic and i mean you can you could see why kids would gravitate to gravitate to him as a coach and he's been so close but when you can make peace with yourself that I've done great and I know I want to win a gold buckle, but you make peace if the gold buckle doesn't happen and go on and live a great life. I mean, that's part of the battle too because some guys are obsessed with the gold buckle and then they stop rodeo and then they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. And it's great that he's doing this now. He has other avenues. I know he you know, majored in kinesiology and all these things and people don't see that side of him necessarily. So it's great to talk to him. Yeah, no doubt about it. And he uh, gave us a good reminder that, uh, you know, at some point all of us can just take a step back you know and look at your surroundings and see what you've done that's a great point there from will and we really appreciate it that's going to do it for another episode of the shoot bosses we appreciate you all joining us here on the show we'll have much more great action coming your way we'll recap some of the rodeos going on here in april but until then keep on rodeoing